here's my question. It's a little quiz. Uh -oh. Kind of like a Zen koan, one of those unanswerable riddles. Uh. What do you get when you cross a piece of cinnamon bread like mm -hmm. this and a cinnamon roll? A really funny sandwich. No, you get what we're trying to make, because th this is not very rich. That's right. It doesn't have much flavor, mm -hmm. and this is a little bit too rich. That's a little over the top. And too sweet. But what we'd like is some of the richness of the cinnamon roll and the intense cinnamon flavor in a bread. That's right. And that's your job. I can do it. Okay. So the key to making a really good loaf of cinnamon raisin bread is nailing the texture and consistency of the bread dough itself. So starting with bread flour. Now bread flour, of course, has a higher protein content compared to all-purpose flour, so it makes stronger gluten development. I'm just going to take out a tablespoon of flour, and I'm actually going to add it to our dough tenderizer, the butter. Now this is a stick of unsalted butter. The first thing you want to do is add just a little bit of flour, because the flour coats the butter, gives it a little bit of grip so it can really incorporate into the dough. And the other thing is you want the butter to be a little bit softened, but not melted. So what we're going to do is toss the butter with this flour, and then we'll set it aside while we build the dough itself, and then we'll add it in later. So to the rest of this flour, we're going to add a little non-fat dried milk powder, which gives us a rich flavor but won't make the dough too dense. And this is three quarters of a cup, a little bit of sugar, third of a cup, and a good amount of instant or rapid rise yeast. This is a tablespoon. Now this will make enough dough to make two loaves, so keep that in mind. So we're going to mix this together, and then we can put it onto the mixer and add the liquids to start making the dough. And we're going to put on the dough hook. With the mixer on medium low, we're going to add the water. Now it's one and a half cups of water, and you want the water to be warm, 100 to 110 degrees, because that'll wake up that yeast activity. But if the water's too hot, say 115, 120 degrees, it'll actually hurt the yeast. I'm just going to whisk the egg together. There we go, and we'll add this. So it takes about a minute or two for all the ingredients to incorporate and become pretty evenly mixed. All right, so that's pretty good. What we want to do is let it sit, and I'm actually going to cover it with some plastic wrap. And what's going to happen is the flour is going to hydrate and actually start forming the gluten so that when we do turn the mixer on, that gluten will develop really quickly and really strongly. All right, so this dough has been sitting for about 20 minutes, and you can see it's made quite a transformation. It looks much smoother and much more hydrated. And now we're going to add the salt, and this is one half teaspoon salt. We're going to turn the mixer on and we're going to knead the dough for about 7 to 15 minutes until it forms a smooth round ball. All right, so you can really see the transformation. And now's the time we add the butter. So, of course, this has developed some good gluten structure, and now we're adding the tenderizer, which is a lot like making brioche, but this is a lot less butter than brioche. So I'm just going to chuck the butter slices in there every so often. And by the end, the dough will be very satiny and smooth and shiny. All right, so this dough's been mixing for about three to five minutes after we added the butter. And now you can see it's cleared the sides of the bowl, but it's still sticking to the very bottom. That's a good thing. That means we have good gluten development. And this is one and a half cups of golden raisins. You just stir these in at the end until they're good and incorporated. And that only takes about 30 seconds or so. So now we're going to take the dough out of the mixer. We're going to transfer it to a bowl that I've lightly greased. So using one of these dough scrapers makes it really easy to transfer the dough around because it's quite sticky. And to turn a dough, you simply pick it up on one side, you fold it over to the other. Turn the bowl 90 degrees and you do it again. We're going to do this a series of eight times. And this does a couple things. One, it gently shapes the dough into a nice ball shape so that it's easy to work with. And two, it really helps the gluten development. That is eight times. And now we're going to cover this with plastic wrap and let it rise. Now, of course, you could let this rise on the counter, but that would take a while because this is a very dense, heavy dough. So what we're going to do is give it a nice, warm, humid place to rise in an oven that's turned off. And what we have in there is a loaf pan. I'm going to pour in about three cups of boiling water. We're going to put this on the bottom of the oven. We're going to put the dough on the top. So the total rising time on this dough is going to be about an hour and a half. But after 45 minutes, that dough will be doubled. I'll gently punch it down and do that folding technique again and put it back for another 45.
so that dough is almost done and ready for it to be shaped and filled. So we're going to start with the filling. Now this is a cup of confectioner sugar, which is a little bit different than most recipes you see that use granulated sugar. We found that the confectioner sugar stuck a little bit better to the dough. And to it we're going to add three tablespoons of ground cinnamon, a little bit of vanilla. This is a teaspoon of vanilla. And this is a little bit of salt, half a teaspoon of salt. We'll mix this together. All right, now we'll go get that dough out of the oven. Oh, she looks good. Mm. So now we're gonna take her out of the bowl and of course, flour the cutting board a little bit so that it doesn't stick. All right, so now I'm gonna cut the dough in half. There we go, and there's your half. And I'm gonna work on the counter over here. This is my half, which I'll flour. So now we're going to press these into rectangles that are about six by 11 with the short side facing you. You know, about six wide and 11 long. You don't need to be too careful because we're not at the shaping part yet. We're just going to build some good structure in the dough. So now take the long side on one side and fold it over the middle. Mm -hmm. And you do the same on the other. Okay. All right, and then you're just going to roll it up. This is a really gentle way to shape the dough and give it, again, a little more gluten structure without making it difficult to handle. Okay. All right, so we're going to sprinkle it with a little more flour. We're going to roll this out till it's pretty thin. It measures about 7 inches across and 18 inches long. You want the dough to be pretty thin. We're going to really make a good filling and spread it thinly into the dough. Okay. Yep, so I'm about 7 inches, which is good, and about 18. All right, so now we're going to put the filling on. And a trick to getting the filling to stick to the dough is to squirt the dough with a little bit of water. All right, now we're going to put the filling on. You want to leave about a quarter inch on the sides and a border of about three quarters of an inch on the end. All right, you just want to tamp down the filling a little bit. So now we're going to spray the filling, but you don't want to overspray it. You don't want it to be wet. You just want a few water spritzes on top. That's perfect. So now starting at one end, rolling all the way to the other. When you get to the end, I like to pull it a little closer so it's easy to work with. And you just want to pinch that seam closed. All right, so we're going to set these aside and let that gluten relax again for a little bit before we finish our shaping technique, which gives us a chance to clean up. All right, so we're all cleaned up and ready to finish shaping the loaves. And here I'm just going to dust a little bit of flour on the cutting board. What we're going to do is actually cut them in half. I'll do one, and then here you can do it with yours. All right, so now we're going to stretch these guys until they're about 14 inches long, which isn't too much longer. You can kind of pick it up and stretch it out a bit. So now we're going to do what's called a Russian braid. You want to rotate them cut side up, and you pinch the ends together. And then you just fold one over the other. And if you could do it about three times or so is about what you do. And then you pinch the ends together on the other side. And then these pans have already been greased, and you just gently pick the dough from both sides and put it in the pan. And there you have it. Pretty as a picture. Boy, that's cool. Yeah, yeah that's nice. Like that. OK, so we're going to cover these with plastic wrap. And of course, we have to let these rise for about another hour and a half. About half of that, 45 minutes, will be in the oven in our nice, warm, moist area. Then, of course, I've got to turn the oven on, so I'm going to take them out and let them finish rising on the counter while I heat up the oven. OK. All right, so these loaves are beautiful. They're nice and risen, and they're about an inch over the lip of the pan, which is exactly what you're looking for. And now we're going to take off the plastic, brush them with just a little bit of egg, and then put them into the oven. So I'm being kind of delicate here because I don't want to deflate any of the dough. So that's why I'm being gentle and dabbing it on. And that's good. So we're going to put this into a 350 degree oven. Mmm. All right, so those are going to bake at that 350 degree temperature for about 25 minutes. And that'll give that nice oven spring, that last lift in the bread. And then I'm going to turn the oven down to 325 and let it go the rest of the time with a tent of foil on top so the loaves don't get too brown. At the end, the bread should register about 200 degrees. So it's time to take their temperature. And again, we're looking for a temperature of about 200 degrees. 198 degrees, that's pretty much close enough. Time to take these guys out of the oven. Mm, they smell good. They do smell. All right, so we're going to take their foil hats off. We're going to let them cool in the pan for about five minutes to set up. Then I'm going to remove the pans and let them cool completely for about two hours before we slice them open. Okay. 
All right, so these have been cooling for about two hours, and they are ready to slice open. Can we just have everybody say how beautiful I know. these are? Could they you look say that? good. Yeah. There you go, a nice slice for mm. you. Here's a little softened butter okay. if you'd like it. Mm. Boy, this is good. That's it. It's sort of the cross between a brioche dough on one hand and sandwich yep. dough on the other. Mm hmm But it mm. has that sort of pastry-like mm. texture with that very delicate mm. crumb. Mm. Home run. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. oh. So it turns out there were three secrets to our makeover of cinnamon swirl bread. We start with bread flour and we let it sit a little bit in the bowl to develop gluten, but it has a lot of butter and also an egg in it. Secondly, the filling had a lot of cinnamon and also confectioner sugar, which helped it stick to the bread. And probably the most important thing is we shaped it using a Russian braid, which kept everything together even when baking. So from America's Test Kitchen to your kitchen, one of our most successful makeovers ever, cinnamon swirl bread. And the cinnamon stays in mm -hmm. my mouth. Ha, ha, ha.